Happy New Year and greetings from Robert Gray Army Airfield. Robert Gray Airfield has been a hotbed of activity over the past several weeks as we have welcomed units back from Operation New Dawn in Iraq and Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. In fact, the aircraft you see behind me just came back in from Afghanistan last night. This week in First in the West, we're going to take a little retrospective on the things that we did within the division over 2011, and then we'll welcome back in another unit that came in just last night. All this and more in First in the West. Well, it's a new year in Division West, and the gears of the training machine never really stopped, not even over the holidays. But before we jump into what the Division is doing in 2012, let's take a little look back at what the Division did over 2011. Gunner, target, sniper, 12 o'clock, top window. At some point in the pre-deployment process, soldiers go through live fire training. The idea, of course, is to make exercises as real as possible without compromising safety. Fire! Training is vital for all soldiers, and this includes Dutch soldiers. Due to a limited amount of space in their own country, these air assault troops are here at Fort Hood developing key tactical know-how. The platoon did an uh, air assault. Uh, they landed on that spot over there with uh, two Blackhawk helicopters. And they have to uh, make um, sure um, the village was safe for the uh, civilians uh, living here. That was their main task. Before the evening was over, soldier trainers presented those on tour with an introduction to Army map reading, showcased emergency procedures during a Humvee rollover, and viewed an Army Black Hawk helicopter up close. Being prepared is critical when conducting convoy escort operations. It's well rehearsed what to do in case we do spot an IED or we do take small arms fire. In battle and maneuvering, all armies prefer high ground to low ground. So said the ancient Chinese general Sun Tzu. It provides eyes in the skies to units, commanders and their units where they can actually add an extra element for them when they're on the battlefield. Whether it be uh, convoy security, route reconnaissance, uh, looking for IED. It's good to be back in Texas, it really is. The soldiers here are demobilizing. They're coming back from their tour of duty in Afghanistan, and we're gonna check out how that's been going for them in these next few scenes. Just glad to be home and get to see the family. Say hi to everybody. Feels good to be back home. requested to come to Fort Lewis and uh, we also understand that this is not uh, something they do um, on, on this level. They're mostly the individual, uh, maybe I don't know if they do battalions, but I know that a brigade was something they had to prepare for. We managed the expectations before we left Iraq. Understanding that we're going to come through in, you know, in, in groups of 250 to 300. As far as I can tell, everybody's pleased with uh, the teamwork that's uh, happened since we've been here. Um, had a lot of requests to go and, uh, you know, uh, recognize different individuals before we leave. Lieutenant General Ben Nerick will then present the colors to Major General Wiggins, the incoming commander, thereby passing the responsibility and authority of command to him. Major General Wiggins will then pass the colors back to the guardianship of the command sergeant major. As you can see, we stay very busy here in the training machine. Most of our focus is on training those units that are deploying to combat. 
but one of the most critical missions that we do involves welcoming those same units back when they've completed their mission, or demobilizing as we call it. Just over the past couple weeks, we have welcomed back hundreds of soldiers, citizen soldiers from across the United States through Fort Hood. Sergeant First Class Gary Stacy has more. It has been a busy time for those returning as well as for those doing the greeting. And just prior to the holidays, the Commander-in-Chief directed that every effort be made to assist redeploying soldiers as they return home. This was driven in part by the American departure from Iraq, but it also added to the tempo for everyone involved in the process here at Fort Hood. These returning soldiers flew in on a C-17, which proved roomy enough for the troops and their gear. Most of the Strat Air flights come with about seven to ten guys. This happened to have 24 on it to include the aircraft that you saw on the airplane. Uh, they'll have some more stuff coming in as well. This is not a very big unit and the, the trail party will come in on Sunday. We'll meet them as well. So they'll start their demobilization activities tomorrow morning and all will go well. The unit he's speaking of, the 5th of the 159th, is a National Guard Aviation Regiment from Wyoming. A C-17 delivered the soldiers and one Black Hawk helicopter to Gray Army Airfield. Coincidentally, another National Guard group, the 126th Aviation Regiment out of Delaware, also returned to Fort Hood to the same airfield and Army terminal about 15 minutes later. Throughout the holiday period and up until now, it's been a busy time for everyone involved in the redeployment process. From eight to 900 redeploying soldiers since Thanksgiving, mid-November, to having only 47 uh, that had to stay here at Fort Hood for whatever various issues uh, over the Christmas holiday is just remarkable. There is a lot to this process, but being welcomed back by the right people at the right time and place goes a long way. Since we started deploying uh, soldiers, uh, we make it a point to come greet them whenever they land back on American soil. So we brought a group down from their battalion um, just to welcome everybody home. You're the group of people that have volunteered to serve this nation and have stepped to the plate to go to war for this nation. And, and I'm so proud to be able to serve with each one of you. You know, I think it's always nice to, to come home and uh, to see the home team. And to, it was nice for me to be able to remind them that the people in Wyoming have been praying for them, have been thinking about them, and have been waiting for them to come home. And their families will be so happy uh, to see them. And we've been so proud of the job that they've been able to do uh, downrange. So for the returning soldiers of both National Guard units, one from Wyoming and the other from Delaware, it's a greeting to be proud of. Made possible in part by the coordination of others these service members may never meet. I'm Sergeant First Class Gary Stacy reporting from Fort Hood's Robert Gray Army Airfield for First in the West. Well that wraps up this edition of First in the West. And this wraps up another deployment for soldiers from the Wyoming National Guard. We'll see you again next week.